I'm Rene Ritchie, and while I was busy just <laughs> covering the hell out of the iPhone 12, a few rumors hit about the upcoming November Apple Silicon event, including, yeah, that there'll be a November Apple Silicon event, a third event this fall. I guess 2020 just says, hey. And apparently the rumors are like conflicted, like a giant leak slap fight or something. And I say apparently because I haven't even really had time to look into them yet. So I'm gonna do that and give you my live reactions right now. Sponsored by Skillshare. There was no March event this year because 2020, but we've already had a September event featuring Apple Watch and iPad. And an October event with HomePod Mini and iPhone. But that still leaves our first Mac with Apple Silicon and something else. John Prosser of Front Page Tech, currently rated 85.5% accurate by the Apple Track website, which just catapults them into the A tier, recently tweeted that there is a November R Mac event and that he's hearing it's gonna happen on November 17th with confirmations being sent out on November 10th. And that just makes the kind of sense that does to me because Apple already announced that there will be Apple Silicon Macs. They announced that at WWDC back in June and that there will be at least one new Apple Silicon Mac system this year. And because it's so novel, because it's so new, and because it likely has new and different characteristics from the Apple Silicon through to how it's being implemented in Mac OS Big Sur, just giving it some time, I was gonna say stage time, we don't have stages, not really anymore, but giving it some event time, sort of go through those stages, uh, renew the hype from June, and just set expectations for everyone, again, makes the kind of sense that does. And same with the date, because November doesn't have a lot of useful Tuesdays. There's already the US election on November 3rd, and Apple just can't have the event the same day as the election and probably not for the next week because who knows how long that's all gonna take to sort out, never mind sending out invitations uh, you know, on the same day as the election for an event next the next week. So they just have to give that some space. And then when you start getting towards the 26th, you have US Thanksgiving, which we beta tested for you in Canada this month already. And Apple typically gives all of the corporate workers, at least retail is a little bit different, but Apple incorporated, uh, you know, from the headquarters, just through all of the non-retail organizations, they typically get the entire week off and doing an event then uh, probably not the best thing even in 2020. So that's probably the only really practical date that Apple could have an event in November. And as to which Mac, which Apple Silicon Mac, Apple's gonna show off at the event, the rumors have really been spread out from a new ultralight 12 inch Mac that would really just show what Apple's iPad Pro level silicon can do in a Mac style enclosure to a new MacBook Pro 13 inch, dare we say finally 14 inch MacBook Pro that would sort of elevate expectations to show what Apple Silicon could do against sort of the better end of the Intel scale. And I've already made just all the videos on all the different possible Apple Silicon Macs, and there's a bunch more to come. And since YouTube says 70% of you still haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that button and bell so you don't miss any of them. So then the question becomes, what does Apple pair with Apple Silicon? You know, like Apple Watch and iPad and HomePod Mini and iPhone. When Tim Cook comes out and says, our first Mac with Apple Silicon, what else does he say along with it? And there have been rumors about a lot of other Apple products, including AirPod Studio, which are sort of the over the ear Apple headphones. Basically, if the Beat Studio line and the AirPods line had a love from child. And Mark Gurman of Bloomberg, who's currently rated at 88.3%, a super solid A tier that I still think should be an S tier, but I don't make the Apple track. I just reference it. Anyway, Mark, who's been breaking this story since it first done gotten broke, said that the first Apple branded over the year headphones, the AirPod Studio basically, could be announced as early as this year. But John uh, even more recently tweeted that there was sort of a hiccup in the AirPod Studio production and that a few key features have been cut, but that it still seems that they need time to work even more things out before they're finally ready to ship. And that was looking to be December at best. 
And that means they could still technically announce them in November and ship them in December, the way they announced the iPad Air in September, shipped in October, or HomePod Mini in October, shipping in November. But he also says that it's just as likely we won't see them until March of 2021. And then even more recently, he said, after this November, our Mac event, the next Apple event, also scheduled to be a digital event, will happen on Tuesday, March 16th, 2021, and that AirPod Studio are going to headline that event, which means they absolutely wouldn't be at this November event. So with all the information still going back and forth, it's a possibility that they'll be here, but it seems more likely that they'll be coming at some point in the future. Also recently in the rumor mill has been an updated Apple TV, basically because everybody just really wants it now. Choco underscore bit on Twitter currently has a 90.9% accuracy rating according to Apple Track with rumors of an A12X version that would better handle HDR compositing and Apple Arcade games, but also an A14X version that would be like a full on console rivaling powerhouse with Apple spending a fortune on AAA games and maybe buying some studios like Microsoft has, which seems outlandish, but you never know. Mark Gurman has said that Apple's been developing a new Apple TV box with a faster processor for improved gaming and an upgraded remote control. And we've also heard rumors about a gamepad, uh, but that it wouldn't ship until next year. And John has also tweeted recently that there is no Apple TV coming until next year. So maybe just fold that into the March event or even later at this point. And that leaves us with AirTags, blessed AirTags that we've been waiting on since the September event, not of this year, but of last year. And John tweeted out that with AirPod Studio now being pushed back, it looks like Apple is gonna pull the AirTags forward and that they're currently on schedule to be released with iOS 14.3 which will contain features to enable them. And that's supposed to come out next month. And that unlike the AirPod Studio, AirTags have been done just for a while now, and it hasn't been about production timelines at all, just basically when Apple wanted to release them. And there have been sort of a lot of theories about what is taking so long with AirTags because they were never announced. So Apple's technically not late on shipping them. And you know, according to the second law of Vulcan metaphysics, uh, nothing unreal exists, but everything looked like it was in place. Apple announced their new Find My Network at WWDC 2019. And Apple put the U1 chip, the ultra wideband chip that handles the precise spatial location into the iPhone 11, uh, which shipped back in September of 2019. So it, it does seem like everything has been in place for a real, real long time. And one of the theories going around was that because of the antitrust investigations and because of the specific complaint by Tile, which has been making uh, little tokens, location tokens like this for a long time, that Apple was waiting. And that's why they announced their Find My APIs back at WWC of this year, you know, like four months ago, that would let any accessory maker add sort of air tags or Tile-like functionality to their own version of the product doing the opposite of what Tile suggested where Apple was stepping over competition by actually creating a whole bunch of new competitors. And, and I sort of always prefer this approach just in the market in general, because Apple is only ever gonna make the Apple version of this. It's only ever gonna work, work well at least, probably at all with other Apple products where Tile I think could compete ferociously by offering the cross-platform version where, you know, forget this only Apple version for only Apple people. If you have a family with big device love, if you have Android devices and Apple devices and Windows devices, you know, you can use Tile as a first class citizen. There's no, there's no green bubble effect on the Tile version of these locators. I think that's just a much more compelling argument. But the thinking was that Apple wanted to really get all these competing, all these additional uh, accessories on the market. So it didn't look like they were singularly trying to put Tile out of business, but we're still waiting on them. And so another theory was because of the pandemic, 
people just weren't going outside, not in large numbers and not for long periods of time. And that would really reduce the appeal, the benefits of a new accessory that was designed precisely to help you find things you lose when you go out, especially when you go out often. So Apple was basically waiting for things to return closer to normalcy so that they could have something closer to a normal accessory launch for this product. But again, who knows when that's gonna happen. So it could be that they're just gonna bite the bullet and forget Tile, forget the pandemic, just get this product on the market, get some legs under it, and then let it take off as much as it can and run with it as fast as they can when and if things start to improve. Meanwhile, Love to Dream, currently rated at 88.2% accurate by Apple Track, so super, super solid A tier, tweeted tag, all caps tag, which isn't as obscure as their usual initialisms, but also feels a lot like do or do not. Mark Gurman though begged to retort, tweeting that launching AirTags alongside the Apple Silicon Max next month sounded unlikely to him, for one thing, because the two products just don't have anything to do with each other, uh, not to mention the several development delays, which I'm guessing is the other thing. And product lines not having anything to do with each other, I mean, again, Apple Watch and iPad. That just doesn't at all seem to be a problem. In fact, I'd argue it's a benefit. So that way uh, no single event is ever too narrowly focused. And so we have John versus Mark, November versus not, ready for a while versus several uh, development delays. And it's super interesting, but there's also just in general, this cockiness that seems to be again, emanating out of the rumor game. And it's just gentle reminder that the goal is not to prove yourself right. The goal is to prove the work accurate because the first is all about personal ego and the second is all about your credibility. So I would humbly suggest just get the best information you can, present it in the best way that you can and just make sure it's accurate uh, regardless, you know, or maybe in spite of what anybody else ever does. And then in general, there's just a bunch of scurrilous, bad, incomplete, out of context rumors, both from people who usually do that and people who usually don't do that. Uh, so I would just, again, say, be really, really careful who you amplify, be really, really responsible about who you amplify, because otherwise all it does is add noise and confusion and zero, zero signal, which isn't a benefit to anybody. And honestly, it makes me wish that I could just animate these tier lists so much better. Forget raid boss level, but just tumbling into abysmal levels, like the quality of Evan from Polymatter. Luckily enough though, he has a Skillshare class where he shows how to make animated YouTube videos just like his Polymatter channel. And it's intended as an introduction, but like he says, by the end of the course, you could have your first video uploaded to YouTube. And if animated isn't your thing, if first person videos like this are more of your groove, Ali Abdal has a class up on video editing with Final Cut Pro 10 from beginner to YouTuber that'll absolutely get you started. Because that's the thing about Skillshare. You can watch and learn just as much as you want about pretty much anything you want. It's really more of an online learning community that offers membership with real meaning, with classes that explore illustration and design, photography and video, freelancing and more, with real projects to create and the support of real fellow creatives. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare and the first 1,000 of you who click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So act now and start learning today. And clicking on that link just really helps out this channel. And for more, much more on all of Apple's new products for the fall, click the playlist above where I preview, unbox, review and compare just all of them for you. Every product, every feature, every detail. Click the playlist and I'll see you next video.